All right, so um, here's something that a lot of people may not agree with, but yeah, in my opinion, they're dumb. So uh, I'm gonna be obviously putting the strings through the, the string heads. When it comes to windings, people will put five or six windings or the, you know, they'll have the string here and they'll just wind it a million times to get all the slack out and it's completely unnecessary. Um, me personally, and I found quite success in this. I've had other people tell me it works really well for them too. Uh, for the eye strings, I'll go a few more, you know, one, two winds around, but you don't need to wind around this tuner head a million times. It's absolutely unnecessary and it's really not a great decision and here's why. So, your string's gonna stretch. Um, you know, everyone's changed strings before and then when you do, you tune it up and then you start playing it and in like 20, 30 minutes or even 10, depending on the string set, um, it just starts going flat on you and everything's out of tune. You gotta keep retuning a million times. Um, or if you do what I'll show you how to stretch your strings before you're done with the setup, then we don't have to worry about it. But it'll take a lot more stretching to get this string settled to where it's not gonna go out of tune. It's gonna stay in tune really well. You have all this string here that will stretch as well as any of the windings on the top. So as much as as long as there's a solid line or a solid string and piece continually going, it's gonna stretch. So the more windings you have on the headstock, the more it's gonna stretch from there. But the problem when it comes to stretching strings is you'll see we'll be pulling from here and stretching this, um, which is not going to put the right tension to stretch around the tuner head. So then you can't really get it settled perfectly right. And then the more you play it, the longer it goes, the more it's going to stretch from the tuner head and cause tuning issues and instability and especially if you're in the studio that's really a bad thing because then you're tuning more and more you're spending more more time tuning and you're not spending time recording which can be very very expensive unless you have an Evertune bridge then well fuck doesn't really matter what you do because that thing is amazing uh, <laughs> still though it's not great practice to do it um, you know just get used to it especially if you have more than one guitar and it doesn't have the Evertune um, first thing I always clip my strings before I start putting one on there because then you're working with a bunch of string ends and it's retarded. But get yourself a set of diagonal cutters. Uh, you can get them in a hardware store for pretty cheap. Um, best best tool to have for this as well. So anyway, just a side note. You'll see especially as so you get to the lower strings, I'll literally have it wrapped less than a full time around. So it's coming from here, it'll wrap around the other side and that's it. You just need it enough in here to pinch it and grab on, and it's less than you think. So you'll see as we go, and I'll, um, I'll point it out when we get there. So. so a little side note, I wanted to give you um, when it came to the windings on the headstock. So if you end up, if you have a Floyd Rose, uh, a tremolo system, you actually want to put a, um, a couple windings around there, partially because you're gonna be locking the nut, and that's gonna keep any of the, um, string tension that changes up here in the headstock. Um, it's gonna keep it from actually affecting any of this. You're not gonna have to worry about it at all. But when it comes to Floyd Rose bridges, you get a lot of times that the string will break at the bridge itself. Especially if you're in a live show, it's important to have extra string windings here so you can unwind one, bring it back down and stick it back in and not have to do a full string change uh, at that point in time. So, it, or if you're just poor and you don't have other strings, there you go, it helps for that matter, but anyway, just side note. So, yeah. All right, so um, this is an extremely thick string. Uh, I think standard medium to light gauge for an A string on the low end is a 0 .075. Uh, this is a 0 .090, it's fucking huge. Uh, and I used to use a GHS set, I think it was 11 through 85, um, which was bigger than normal. And when it came to this tuner head, it was not, um, the hole is not big enough. Now, string joint here, being the wonderful people they are, I don't know if you can see, there is a difference in a taper here uh, in the winding, so it is smaller to go through the tuner head, which is so wonderful. 
Thank you, Stream Joy, for being absolutely amazing. And their um, their string length seems to go at about 30 inches, considering this is a 28 inch scale length. So the windings actually go up to the nut. But what I originally had to do um, for this, excuse me, woo, uh, for this tuner head is I actually this is what is called a set of jeweler files. They're extremely small files of all different shapes. Um, most of them are pretty negligible for what you need, but there is one here that is a tapered round one. Um, so what I did is I just took it in the tuner head here. You go back and forth and kind of keep your pressure all the way in the circle around as you go. Switch to the other side since it's tapered, you can't just go directly through. And just kind of slightly um, grind it away until it is open enough to stick the string through. Uh, I did not leave a lot of space when I put the one, uh, the .085 through it does have a little bit of resistance to it, so um, yeah, you don't want to do it enough where you're going to weaken this and snap it off, but sometimes this is what you got to do. Uh, don't be afraid to to really mess with your instruments. They're not as delicate as you think. Uh, but yeah, little bits at a time. I do like two or three times around, three times around on the other side, and then check it with a string. So yeah, small increments at a time. That's the way it goes. Anyway, just want to let you know how to go about doing that if you run across that, especially for the eight strings. I don't think with a six or seven string, you're really gonna have a problem unless you start going at 85s or so and you're doing a ridiculous tuning, like an F sharp on a seven string. In that case, you should just get an eight string and stop being lazy, but yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is one of the main reasons I wanted to do this video because a lot of people run across this, um, a lot of metal guys especially, and it is a huge issue that can cause a major lack of tonality coming through the instrument and make people feel like something wrong, something is wrong with the instrument and it's really not. So when I'm, when they cut these nuts, they cut it to where uh, the nut slots are pretty open to the point where you can kind of change strings from um, medium to heavy sets without it being too much of an issue and it seats really well down all the way to the bottom of the, um, the, the slots. Now, drop tuning guys will see this a lot, and I used to do this on a six string, so you'd be like drop B flat and it was an issue. Um, not when I used the Floyd Rose, because those things are pretty fucking huge, you don't have to worry about it. But, um, I'm not going to be able to get you to see this, because it's so minute, and I just don't have the ability to pull the camera that close. But, what I did is I took a cell phone light, flash that would be easier, looked at the bottom of the string and the nut slot and there is a gap. It is not seating all the way down to the nut slot. Now that will do a couple of different things. For one, it's not getting proper contact down onto the nut, so vibration transfer is not happening um, properly across the whole instrument. So if it's not going down here, it's not traveling here. You know, so if it stops here, it's not going anywhere else. So, I mean, it'll still get some because it's contact on the sides, but you want as much contact as possible in that slot. The other thing, um, you might not be able to see this, but we'll kind of see it. It is really high off of the first fret. Um, that can cause a huge amount of issues depending on how high it is. Um, this is not a lot, so I wouldn't worry about it pulling out of tune, but if it is high enough, as you pull it down to the first fret, it will stretch the string enough to where it will pull it sharp. So you'll tune it open and it'll be in tune, press the fret down and it's sharp for no reason. Uh, other than there's too much tension there. Uh, plus it just makes it hard to play not as comfortable and an issue when you're talking about something this thick because then you start having really uh, high tension you have to get a stronger hand and it'll wear your hand out pretty quick if you're doing anything technical so again um, that's where this jeweler file comes in handy and a lot of people are very scared to do this uh, and you should use some kind of caution because if you mess this slot up and get it too deep to where it is buzzing on the first fret regardless of what you do you now need a new nut. There is no fixing that. I mean, you can do some things where you can put like a um, a paper shim under here or something, but then you're losing tone transfer as well too, and it's not worth it. If you're just a hobby guitarist, I wouldn't worry about it too much, but if you're a professional or you're going to record, not your best uh, bet for a fix. I wouldn't do that. You bastards, stay over there. Anyway, um, so I'm gonna sit in my chair so I can see this a little bit better. What you want to do um, when you're doing this is, it, it's very specific. You do not want 
to file the very bottom of this slot. Because what that's going to do is lower the string to the first fret. And that's gonna cause buzzing. Um, if you do a little bit, I wouldn't worry about it. You gotta go quite a bit to really be an issue. Um, just because the way manufacturers do this, because this neck's gonna move depending on where in the country it's shipped or in the world, because a lot of these, this one especially is made in, I believe, South Korea. So we went halfway across the world to get here. That um, climate change is gonna make this neck warp quite a bit. So you basically want it to where, open up a box, put it in a store, someone can play it and it plays right. It doesn't buzz, doesn't have a problem. So these nuts and the slots are going to be a little bit higher off the first fret than they absolutely need to be. So if you go a little lower, you accidentally hit the bottom, don't worry, you're not gonna mess it up immediately. It's not that big a deal. Everybody's afraid, oh, I, I, I do one swipe with the file and uh-oh, it's screwed up, it's not gonna happen. Uh, unless you're just a monitor, you're pressing really hard and then you shouldn't be working on your guitar anyway. Um, so what you wanna do is, so there's a crest. Um, let me see if I can find a piece of paper to show you a little bit. So there's a crest on this slot. So say this is the slot here. You don't wanna hit here. You don't wanna hit this side up in here and here cause that's just gonna leave it out and your string's still gonna hit this point and not see it full, fully. So what you want, I'll get another piece in this fret slot to the, this area and this area right at the curve where it's not perfectly perpendicular and that was going to widen this bottom area enough for it to seat here without dropping that down so that's what we're going to do so i'm going to take the tip of my file where it's small and just slowly file the sides just a little bit on both sides, um, that way you're kind of getting it even and it's not gonna um, it's not going to hit the bottom or anything like that and it's not gonna make one side oblong. So, as you see, I only did a few strokes on either side and now I'm going to put it on there and I'm gonna check it. I know it's tedious, but that's how you keep from destroying your instrument and then having to take it to a luthier to get a new nut because it's not cheap. Unless you really want a new nut on there, then have at it and have fun, whatever you want to do. Um, tighten it up with decent tension so it really pulls it down. If you don't put enough tension, it's obviously not gonna pull it down enough and you're gonna get a false reading on whether it's really sitting in the slot properly or not. Not quite, so it needs a little bit more. Now me personally, I like my strings a little bit closer to the uh, the first fret. So personally, I'm actually going to file the bottom of that down just a little bit. But I've been doing this for a while, so I know what I'm doing. Uh, if you've never done this before, or you've never made a nut from scratch, do not do that. Find a luthier to do it for you. The other thing is, is this um, slot is not going to be perfectly good with the fretboard. It's going to be at an angle towards the headstock so that the string doesn't have a pinch point in the back, uh, which means high tension at this point of the string because it's curving in a singular point and not two points, one on each side of the nut. And then what that's going to do is cause extra tension there and possibly snap your string up here. So you want to make sure you're filing at that angle or very similar to it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Not going to be a huge issue if it's not. So just a little bit, check it again. It's pretty much what you do. And that's the process in the repeat and rinse, rinse and repeat until you're done. All right, that is sitting down all the way. I feel like the tension's enough um, where I can deal with how low it is and it doesn't need to be any higher or doesn't need to be any lower at this point in time. Um, I don't have a good set of nut slots to really do this with plus, or nut slotting files. Don't have a good set of nut slotting files to do this with plus at the same time nut slotting files are pretty um, specific to gauge 
size and um, this is a very odd set of gauge sizes so it wouldn't really work well anyway for most of it but I'll deal with that later anyway that's where it should be um, as far as making sure everything's seating properly so I'm getting proper tone um, and resonance through the instrument as well too. So thanks for tuning in everyone. I hope uh, you learned something from this or it helped you in some way with your setups. Uh, tune in next week on Saturday as I'm going to be continuing with uh, this string change and set of videos. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Give a comment below if you have any questions on anything, go ahead and ask me in the comments and hit the notification bell uh, and subscribe so that way you can get notification of when I put the next video up next week. So have a good week everyone.